Come on, put your hands together and bless him. Hallelujah. We come to tell the Lord that he is wonderful, that he is marvelous. The Bible says, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name, God. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name. Let heaven and earth, let it proclaim, God. Come on, come on, put your hands together. Somebody shout to God with the voice of triumph. Oh. Come on, somebody shout to him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, take a few moments out to release yourself from the day. And open up your mouth and tell God something. Let him hear your voice tonight. Let your praise be heard. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory, glory. Come on, Sopranos, help me say, oh, Lord.
ourselves to walk in the word Thank you, Lord. your word living in us yes. produces your life in this world we recognize that your word is integrity itself steadfast sure eternal and we trust our lives to its provisions you have sent your word forth into our hearts we let it dwell in us richly in all wisdom we meditate in it day and night so that we may diligently act on it. The incomparable seed, the living word, the word of truth is abiding in our spirit. That seed is growing mightily in us now, producing your nature, your life. It is our counsel, our shield, our buckler, our powerful weapon in battle. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. To make our way plain before us, we do not stumble, for we steps, our steps are ordered in the word. We're going to listen to the word because the word is life. We thank you, Lord, for this program and this service right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Somebody bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on, let your praise be continuous. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands to him and just begin to give him the fruit of your lips? Hallelujah, without the music, just let God, let your voice be the instrument. You are excellent. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. We bless your name tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. For your excellent greatness, hallelujah, yes, we yes. bless you tonight, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, hallelujah, Let your praise, hallelujah. let your worship be continuous. Oh, glory, oh, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. His name is holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
rain. Mighty strong tower. Yes. I'll bless your name. Yes. Come on, let's take it up. I lift my hands to worship. Yes. I lift my voice. Exalt and extol. I'll bless your name. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is why. Tell them, for you have been my rock. My rock. Yes. A shelter from the rain. Mighty strong tower. Yes. Yes. I'll bless your name. Come on, let's take it up one more time. Come on, I lift my hands. your name. It's your name, God. Your name. Uh, that's a strong tower. It's your name. That heals. It's your name. That delivers. It's your name. And we just want to bless your name, God. We just want to bless your name, God. It's your name that blesses us. It's your name that performs a miracle. It's your name that heals us. It's your name that changes every situation. It's your name. We just want to say, bless your name. Bless your name. Holy. Your name is holy. Your name is holy. I'll 
David said, I will. David said, I will. Yes. Lift your hands and let him see you. Let him see you. Come on now, lift it up to him. Now lift it up. Hey. That's a good place. That's a good place. That's a good place. That's a good place. Oh, that's a good place. That's a good place. I dare you lift your voice and let him hear it. I dare you lift your voice and let him hear it. I dare you lift your voice and let him hear it. Join in with the angels tonight as they cry, Holy, 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 Holy. Holy. Your name is Holy. How blessed your name. Let God hear your voice without the instruments. Tell him your name.
Christ, in the name of the Lord. Come on, one more time, put your hands together for Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give an honor to God. We thank God for tonight. Extraordinary night. Extraordinary week. Holy week. Passion week. Tonight we're gathered, amen, to celebrate our Good Friday service. So again, we welcome all of you here to the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries where none other than Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. We give God praise for those who are joining us online tonight. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Tonight, we're going to hear from some extraordinary men and women of God who love God who's going to testify about the story of what took place during these eight days of Holy Week starting with last Sunday which is Palm Sunday tonight Elder David Baxter will start us off with Father forgive them for they know not what they do Pastor Chris from Fruits of the Harvest is with us on tonight. Mighty man of God will lead us in our second saying tonight. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. His lovely wife, Apostle Pastor Chantel, will lead us with woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. And we have our fourth saying will be coming from our dear pastor, Pastor Juan Hardwell will be with us on tonight and he will lead us, but my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Number five will be Elder Craig Butler. Brother Elder Craig will talk to us for a few moments about I thirst share with us Jesus as he prepared to take his last breath. And then our sixth saying will come from our very own a prophetess Janelle Reeves tonight. She will speak with us on It Is Finished. And bringing up last saying of the night, saying number seven, to our very own Elder Ron McCall, Father, and to thy hands I commend my spirit. Pray, amen, that you would hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us on tonight. Father God, we bless you, we honor you, we love you so sons and daughters, your children, we've all gathered to hear from you tonight. Speak to us. We are listening. We love you, God. And we honor you tonight. You be glorified in this house, in our heart and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, the people of God said amen, amen. Name it one more time. Put your hands together for Jesus the Christ. He's the reason that we're here tonight. He's the reason that we're here tonight. So Elder Baxter will start us off and the elders and the apostles will come as their, as their time calls for them to come. Right, and I'll, I'll speak with you at the end of the service. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer. Let's give God a praise for the people of God tonight. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ha 
Hallelujah. Luke 23, 34 says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Amplified begins by saying, and Jesus prayed. Here we see intercession at work. While Jesus was suffering, hanging on the cross, he interceded on behalf of the people. The same people that celebrated him five days prior with shouts of Hosanna, blessed is he, is he who comes in the name of the Lord, John 12 and 13, are now shouting, crucify him, crucify him, Luke 23 and 21. The same people that saw Jesus raise the dead now wanted him dead. There will be people in your life that will celebrate you. They'll encourage you. They'll bless you. They'll support you. Even speak well of you. And then all of a sudden will turn and betray you. But God has a plan. See, our first thought is to get revenge. You know us. I ain't about to let that ride. I'm about to check that fool. But God tells us in Luke. 628 the B portion pray for those who mistreat and remember God has a plan and if the enemy your enemy knew the plan that God has for your life if they understood the purpose in which you were created for they would not have allowed things to be set in motion had they knew that the betrayal of Judas to Jesus started the process of promotion. He had knew, if he had knew that the wounding and the bruising and the chastising would bring healing and deliverance from the sickness of sin, sickness and bondage of sin, he wouldn't have stopped. Had he knew that the nailing of his hands and feet were securing our salvation and victory over our adversary and that he was being lifted up for all to see that he was the prophesied Messiah wouldn't have let it happen had he knew that the piercing of his side would release water and blood for cleansing and covering generations to come they would have left him alone let him be but God made a promise and Jesus was the fulfillment of that promise. So now bringing it to you. Had your enemies knew that God had called you to a place of purpose. God had destiny on your life. They wouldn't have mistreated you. They wouldn't have abused you. They wouldn't have talked about you. They wouldn't have misled you. They would have let you stay in your little place of worship. They would have let you remain in your little spot and just serve the Lord. But... God had a plan. So God needed you to have a few enemies. God needed some people to talk about you and dog you. God needed some people to despise you. God needed you to feel rejection. Hallelujah. The Bible reminds us in Isaiah 53 verse 10, it says this, and it pleased the Lord to bruise him. One translation says to crush. God knew that you needed to be crushed to release what was in you. Because what was in you wasn't for you, but it was for people to come that was coming behind you. There had to be something that happened that brought you to a place of release so those that were coming behind you could receive and gravitate to the anointing that's on your life. You were called to something greater. So you had to go through I know we didn't want to go through. You don't want the trials. You don't want the tribulations. You don't want the trouble. But I promise you, if you remain faithful, the Bible says to endure hardness as a good soldier. So if you're able to endure hardness just for a little while, God is going to give you trouble, double for your trouble. Hallelujah. I almost said that wrong. God is going to bless you immensely as long as you remain faithful. I know. Jesus in agony on the cross easily could have said, you know what? Bump this. Call forth an angel, a legion of angels and shut everything down. But he operated in the grace of God and God sustained him through the pain, through the punishment, through the breaking, through the piercing of his side that he would endure. 
And all he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So why are they talking about you? Why are they dogging you? Why are they making you feel ostracized? Why are they rejecting you? You don't have to have a comeback. Silence can't be was quoted. Hallelujah. And everything don't need a response. Sometimes all you got to do is look to the hills from which come of your help. Why are you being persecuted? Why are you being rejected? Why are you being neglected? Why are your best friends are talking about you? See, Jesus had to deal with the folk that he healed, that he blessed, that he provided for. Jesus had to talk to them people and look at their faces and hear them say, crucify him. The same people that you covered, that you kept, that you blessed, that you provided for, that you stayed up praying all night for, that you gave rise to, that you did all these things for. These will be the same people that will turn their backs on you and treat you like a dog. But you got to look to the hills from which cometh your help. With tears streaming down your face. You got to say, God, sustain me in this moment. Because I don't understand why they're coming against me. And God said, yeah, because I'm about to raise you up. See, I had to create a place for enemies. As me and Elder Alonzo talked earlier, how can I prepare a table for you if you have no enemies? So for me to prepare this table, I got to call some people to not like you. So why are you going through? Endure the test and the time. Endure the trial and the tribulation. Keep your eyes fixed like a flint on God. And at the right moment, when everything seems to be about to fall apart, say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Powerful, powerful, powerful. God, keep moving your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we coming out of the passage, that's God. Hallelujah. Who are we? Hallelujah. I heard Pastor Mark say in the text, he said, 10 minutes. That's why I'm going to put my clock on right quick. 10 minutes. All right. 10 minutes that the Holy Spirit can do what he do. Hallelujah. We're coming out of our text out of Luke chapter 23, verses 43. And when Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, why did Jesus tell the thief why did this day that he would be in paradise? We got to look back on the thief now with the thief, the criminal, who was in his last state, who was about to die, who knew who he was going to die. How he came to Jesus Christ when he ridiculed the other, the, uh, the other criminal who was saying, save himself and save us and save yourself. He ridiculed him and say, and looked at the people and gave a public confession of forgetting, asking of his confession of sin. He looked out and said, we do to the things that we did, the evil that we done, we deserve. But this man, he turned around and justified Jesus Christ. Don't need nothing of miss. He has nothing done, nothing wrong. Ah, and then he turned to Jesus Christ in the sight of forgiveness and said, Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. So you got to remember the disciples, they displayed, they fled from, they, they scattered from Jesus Christ. They, oh, they ain't had no hope. They thought the hope of the kingdom was done with. But this criminal on the cross, he knew the kingdom had not come yet. He came in faith. He had more faith than the disciples altogether. Didn't have that type of faith. But he had the faith, knew Jesus and said, Jesus, when you come to your kingdom, remember me so this criminal right here was justified in the eyes of Jesus Christ in his last state of his a day of his life no matter what state that you in no matter if your last day your last breath or what type of sin that you have done you know that it ain't by your works 
that you are justified, but it's by your faith. So this criminal knew in his faith, not what he did, his faith in Christ Jesus caused him to be saved. He didn't have to do no ritual works to be saved. He didn't have to be good to be saved. He had to go be baptized in the water to be saved because he was already in a state of death, but it was his faith that justified him before our king. And that's why our king said, Verily, verily, today you shall be with me in paradise. When he breathed his last breath, he in paradise with Jesus Christ. See, this is not down to naysayer, the religious folks, about this scripture right here, about this scene right here, when this criminal was over the cross, that God justified, God showed his love, and give everybody a chance to be saved. No matter how dark you are in your sin, no matter how dark it is, but when you come to a, a living faith, a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, ha, oh yeah, you will come to a saving faith, a saving grace, a righteousness to be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. It ain't about nothing that we need to do or say, but this criminal knew. He knew by faith. He was touched on that cross. He probably heard about Jesus Christ. Not even seen him do no miracles or anything. But he knew that the unction of that faith that he had in him. When the Holy Ghost touched him. Because you got to remember what Jesus said. Unless the Holy Ghost come upon you. You will not believe in me. So that day that that guy was on the cross. That criminal was on the cross with Jesus Christ. He confessed to a body. He confessed to him. He submitted to him. Remember me Lord. When you come into your kingdom. He you know that's where he's saying, I know you got a kingdom beyond this natural world. I know you got a kingdom, oh Lord, that's eternal Lord of an eternal say. I know you got a kingdom, Father, that dwells righteous. I know you got a kingdom, God, that we will never die. I know you got a kingdom, ah, ah, testify that you, Lord, remember me. Ah, when you come into your kingdom. Oh, Jesus said today to all that's stuck in that sin, that's all led to death. Oh, today, they want to take you into paradise with him. All you got to do is believe, just like this criminal did. Have the faith, the trust of faith, the justful faith, the love of faith, that faith in him, that faith in that person, that person of Jesus Christ, faith in his justification to be saved, no matter what state you in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we got to keep that in our hearts. This criminal shows a, a good sign of faith in the works of faith because we know that Jesus said that in our sin that we was justified. While we were yet in our sin, Jesus Christ died for us. While we yet in our sin, Jesus Christ died for us. As Paul the brother, as Paul the apostle said, yet in our sins that we was justified by Jesus Christ. When we was in our sins, he died for us. And here's a picture of that thing right there of saving grace that Jesus accepted him into the kingdom. Jesus accepted him into the paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. You don't have to die no more. Oh, I know what you've done, but you gave a confession of your sin. You asked me to forgive you. You asked me to accept you. I have accepted you, my son. You today, you will be with me in paradise. Oh, say that the bomb not say. Yeah, come up a hasha. Oh, so do do go haba. Don't let the devil tempt your mind. And don't let the devil tempt your mind to make you look at your natural self. Because it ain't about your natural self. It's about your heart. It's about the heart. And Jesus Christ was on the cross with it. Even though Jesus was in misery, he gave him an opportunity to receive salvation. Even though he was in that cross, Jesus looked into his heart and seen the pureness in his heart that obsolete everything that he had done in his life physically. But he looked in the purity of his heart and Jesus justified him. Hey, he justified him. Because we know the Bible said that God only looks on the heart. He don't look at the natural exterior of man. He don't care how much money you got. He don't come at you a law by the citizen. He don't care if you doing this or doing that. He don't care if you ain't committed a criminal crime. He said, yeah, but if the heart is stained, I can't receive you. If your heart is in disbelief, I can't receive you. Your good works is not accepted by me, but it's your faith in my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what this criminal gave to the Lord Jesus Christ and turned to him, knowing he about to die. 
and did the righteous thing that the other one didn't do. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Today, not tomorrow, but right now, you'll be in paradise, supernatural paradise with me. Amen and amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Oh, come on, Pastor Chris. You done said some stuff on tonight. Oh, my God. The Lord said even the criminals can find some grace. All you got to be in a place is in a place where God will hear your confession today. Oh, my God. Y'all on fire on tonight. I couldn't sit there and I done left my notes. I got to bring it from the hip. Oh, my God. Today, today, I'm going to be speaking in your hearing from John 19. And it's going to be chapter 19, verse 26, right? When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, woman, Behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own. Come on, somebody say amen. The Lord had a plan. I believe that when he called his mama woman, he was speaking to her every being, everything, everything that made her a woman. I believe he was speaking from that place of, of being a deity. I believe it was at that time that he knew he was drawing close to the end. It was about to be finished. It wasn't finished yet. And he had to set some things in order. I believe it was at that time that he just peeped in for a minute because he had been to a place that he spoke about before, before he ended up right there. And I believe we can find that place in John 17. Come on, go with me. Oh, come on. Let me tell you something, baby. When the Lord is about to take you through something or you got to go through something right when you're in a position like that criminal was on that cross pastor Chris just preached about there's a place where you need to be you can't be in the flesh you got to get out the flesh and get into the spirit Jesus often spent time in that spiritual place. He didn't comprehend too much the fleshly things because he was real spiritual. We got to get to that spiritual place. So when he called his mama woman, he wasn't in the flesh. He was in the spirit. Come on, come on. So let's go there. 17, I believe this. I believe that Jesus said, when he said, when he said in 17, go to verse 8. As a matter of fact, go to, give me a minute. 17, verse 17, John 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. When he looked at his mother and he told his disciple John, behold thy mother, he knew that they needed to be in a place of sanctification. He knew that he had already play, prayed to God what the expectation was for those he was looking upon. He already knew that he brought the word into the world and they were going to be okay because when he prayed, he said, I am with you now. I'm not in the world, but I'm with you now. Oh, y'all missed that. 
I am with you now, he said. He said, on the, in, in 10, he said, no more in that place. This is before he died. He goes to the spirit. Let's go there. 10 reads. Let me find. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. He said, and now, Father, keep thou my own, not my own, while I was with them. While I was with them in the world. He read this in John 17. While I was with them in the world. When he prayed John 17, he prayed for those that he loved. And he prayed in the spirit realm. He had already prayed. He said, but now, and then he goes down, you go down to 13, and he says, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world. He had already prayed. So I believe because that's how he prayed and that's where he often went when he prayed concerning us. I believe when he stood at that moment and he said, behold thy son, woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. He was not where we thought he was in the flesh hanging on the cross. He was in the spirit he had already would transition. See, he, had, he knew Pastor Juan, that he had to follow the instruction. He already knew that he was about to lay his life down. He already knew that he had to be the one to raise himself back up and the time was about to come. He already knew because the Lord had commanded him to do it. He had to follow the instructions. He didn't have time to worry about such things. Behold thy son. Behold thy mother. Take care. I done already prayed. I done already been before the father and prayed to y'all. I done already loved the world in the world. So you already know what to do. Now I got to be about my father's business because I've gotten to that place uh, where I got to follow the instruction. Uh, I got to do some things that y'all don't know nothing about. Because my father has commanded me to get me back up. I'm at that final stage now. I've done everything that I needed to do. Uh, but I need to get this out to you. Uh, Chris, uh, take care of my babies. Uh, I need my babies. Uh, take care of my husband. Uh, everything going to be all right. Uh, I done did what I needed to do for y'all. Uh, I got to go take care of my father's business. Uh, I want to see him say, uh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, there's a part two to this. Oh, come on. He knew that time was coming. He knew what his next words were going to be. He had already left here. He did it in John 17. Uh, often when he prayed, uh, he wasn't here. Uh, and that's when he came back out. Uh, he was empowered. Uh, he could touch and lay hands uh, because he took time uh, and went to a heavenly place uh, and spoke on your behalf. It wasn't mama, it was woman. She was created in my image. It was son. Behold, it's already happening. I got to go handle my father's business. It is my commandment to do that. Though you see all of this happening to me, don't worry about it. Y'all take care of yourself. Do what you need to do. I already know I'm coming back, but I just need to let you know it's all right. Take care of my mama. Mama, take care of him. Y'all take care of one another. I love you. Do you understand? This ain't over. What you crying for? I know where I'm at now. I couldn't understand it in the beginning. I thought he had forsaken me. I really didn't know what to expect. But now I'm figuring these things out. Because nobody taketh my life. It is mine to give. And it is me that will raise it back up. Because my father has commanded me to do it. They ain't did nothing. I need y'all to focus on y'all. I'll take care of y'all because I got this I got this and we got to remember that today 
he got up it was not finished at that moment not yet but he knew that he had to fulfill the purpose of God he didn't say I am the one going to raise me up and that was it no he said my father has commanded me to do this thing it was a commandment I received from my father to raise me up so he already knew Take care of each other. Today, I share with you today, it's not over. It's not over because he got up. It's not over. Do what you need to do to look out for one another. Treat each other like it. Look, treat your, treat your sons like they're your sons. Treat your mothers like they're your mothers. Take care of one another because it's not over not just yet amen Praise the Lord. Yeah, I like this mic. Amen. So, um, I'm going to just, uh, I'm not going to be up here long. Uh, uh, we're coming out of Matthew chapter uh, 27, verse 46. It says, in about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We can only imagine what Jesus went through. It's unbelievable. It's kind of hard to read this verse without, you know, crying. Because, you know, just what he went through for all of our sins. Amen. How many of us have sinned against God? He went through all that. You know, seven inch nails going through his wrists. Can you imagine that? On a 45 degree angle cross, a whooping him with a cat of nine tails, crown of thorns on his head, the neurological compulsion that he's going through, the pain shooting in his back. Imagine this though, you got the nails in your hands and you got your weight from your body just coming down on the nails. And Can you imagine that? And then the paralysis that was in his hands. And then what that does when your hands go numb and mentally you go into shock due to the extremity of the pain. And I think of all that that he did for us. Man, I don't know. I, I know when I talk to God, I come to God jacked up. I come to God, I come to God real small and minute. I don't know. I, I'm constantly pleading for mercy and thanking God because I know hell is a real place. I don't want to go, amen. I mean, you know, so just just knowing that he went through all of this for you, you know, that cat of nine tails had metal in it; it was ripping through his flesh. And when he said, "My God, why have thou forsaken me?" It's because he took all of our sins on him. It's just that simple, amen. But ain't it a wonderful thing we, that we celebrate Easter just to lift up His name? Ain't God so cool that he is the way, the truth, and the light. No man come to the Father but through him. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will be coming from John 19, verse 28, with a few reference scriptures as well. Hallelujah. I'd like to start off with Psalm 22, verse 14 and 15 says, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are 
are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like baked clay and my tongue clings to my jaw. You have brought me to dust, to the dust of death. Then in Psalm 69, 21, he says, they also gave me gal for food. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Then here we are, John 19, 28. After this, look at somebody say, after this. Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, finished, done, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Look at somebody and ask them, are you really that thirsty? Ooh, I'm about to help somebody in here. We all have set out on some type of quest, journey, or goal for our life, whether it be physical, educational, or some other personal gain to change or that will change our present situational circumstance, that an outcome that would be beneficial not just for us, but perhaps for someone else. After a while, as I'm sure we all have uttered the words, I'm tired. And I need something to drink. Or simply said, I'm thirsty. I don't know about you, but in the quest to improve my health, improve my physical being, and being on the treadmill, on the elliptical, or something. But once I get off of that bad brother, the first thing I say is I need something to drink. It's something about doing something that draws from you that will cause you to want something to go back in you. It's something about receiving something so cool and refreshing as simple as water that makes us feel like we've just finished something that was worth it. And thinking on that, I have to encourage someone tonight just to let you know in Galatians 6 and 9 it says and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not for this light affliction is but for a moment and it works a far more great greater weight of glory ask somebody else, somebody else and say are you really that thirsty at some time in our lives, we have done some things that have caused us to feel tired, drained, and almost lifeless. We felt as if we couldn't go on. We felt as if this isn't worth it. Or will it be worth all that I'm going? Is it really worth it is it worth what I'm going through is that drink of water worth me spending this time of being abused is that drink of water worth me doing this am I really that thirsty Let's take a trip back in our minds to a time when we have done some type of work or activity. And at the end of that particular task, we were looking forward to receiving something to replenish us, to refresh us, something just to drink because of what we have done. It has drained us. It has caused us to, what was there to hydrate our body, has now, after doing this task, has now dehydrated our body. Am I really that thirsty? It is in the great expectation of receiving that reward, you felt like something had been accomplished and you were done with the task for that day. You were obeying the desire and feeling after that you have completed 
for that moment or that day was truly accomplished. It is finished and now you can receive your just reward. Am I really that thirsty? It's nothing like knowing that what you have been instructed to do, Jesus, uh, or what you have been challenged to do, Jesus, uh, or even what you challenge yourself to do, y'all, have been accomplished and you now know that you're ready to bask in what has been finished and all the while you rest and take a drink. Am I really that? Can you see our Savior hanging there on the cross after being passed from Cephas, Pontius Pilate, Herod, and even the people? His speaking, the scourging, the spitting on, the nail, the crown of thorn. And in the midst of all of that, he had not said, as some of us would have, I'm in pain. For the fact speaks for itself that the only thing that he said was, I thirst. Am I really that thirsty? For the scripture was foretold both the thirst and the drink, the thirst and the drink were both to be felt most and to be quenched only when there's one toil that have been completely ended. Think about that thing that you did. The first thing you went for was something to drink. So my brothers and sisters, as we travel along this journey of Christianity, we have to consider the journey that Jesus had to go through. Even while on the cross, he showed compassion by saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even after being nailed to the cross, he still made sure that the family was established. He still made sure that he knew that we knew who his father was. He made sure that we knew he was still human. Can we consider, am I really that thirsty? Have we considered, even thought about the ending to the point you realize and almost have to ask the question, do I really want something to drink? Or am I just imagining this? Did I work hard enough to receive that? Did I cry enough to receive that? Was I abused enough by the people that said they loved me but now have crucified me? Am I that thirsty? Have we considered walking in such a way that we know what the end is going to be at some time when we say we're thirsty? David said, as the deer panted for the water brook, so my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Are you really that thirsty? The scripture says, and this, after this, what is your this? What is your this? What gives you the audacity to say, I Knowing that all was accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he simply said, I thirst. After all that the Savior had gone through, as the old song said, he never said a mumbling word. 
It wasn't until he knew that what he had suffered, he was supposed to suffer. It wasn't until he knew that what he endured, he was supposed to endure. So it wasn't until he knew that all things were accomplished that he can open up his mouth and simply say, ah, thirst. I have to believe in my sanctified mind that Jesus said, okay. As he replayed the three years of his ministry, of his 33 years of life, that this has to come to an end. Let me get this last drink of what I thought to be water. So he gained enough strength and breath and simply uttered the words, So I just want to encourage you tonight after you've taken the last sip of water after you look back over your life and the work you've done after your ask yourself before you put the cup to your mouth am I really that thirsty glory to God Come on, you thirsty people, give God praise. Come on, you thirsty. You know you're thirsting for the Holy Ghost. You know you're thirsting for his presence. You know you're thirsting for his word. You know you're thirsting for his life. You know you're thirsty for love. You know you're thirsty for peace. You know you're thirsty for joy. You know you're thirsty for healing. You know you're thirsty for salvation. You know you're thirsty for his peace. Come on, give God praise because you are that thirsty and you'll go through whatever it takes for God to bring you some peace, for God to give you some joy, for God to give you some love, for God to give you somebody in your life. Yes, you are that thirsty. Now come on and give God praise for my fellow brothers and sisters, the messengers of God, as they've come to bring to you what's on the heart of God tonight. Hallelujah. I thank God for being thirsty. Hallelujah. You don't appreciate water until you're dehydrated. Hallelujah. You don't appreciate the water of his spirit until he's, you haven't felt his spirit in a while. You, have, you don't appreciate his voice until he shuts up from you for a while. Hallelujah. Thank God for being thirsty. Hallelujah. Tonight I come from John 19 verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. 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 Brought or having come to an end. Finished. To bring something to a state where nothing else remains to be done. Finished. To bring an event to a natural or an appropriate stopping point. Finished. Clearly there was nothing left or else for our Savior to endure. Yet there was something left for his humanity to do. Somebody say there's unfinished business. See, the business began in Genesis 1, 26 and Genesis 1, 31. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. You creepy, creepy thing. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good 
good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day see my assignment tonight is not about the seventh for there is one that cometh after me that give you about the seventh but indeed it is about the sixth for from the beginning of humanity the sixth day the fall of humanity and since the redemption of humanity the completion of God's salvation plan was solidified in his sixth last word there yet remains some unfinished business it's the law of the first mention of the six for once something is truly finished there is truly a rest and we're not resting yet so Genesis the second says thus the heavens and the earth were finished were completed and all their host by the seventh somebody say by the seventh by the seventh by the seventh day God completed his work he didn't hit complete it and he completed it in six and he rested in seven but in his unfinished business for us because we're in the six this is the sixth word and he said there's still yet some unfinished business for the God for the God the regard of our redemption plan was accomplished our Savior one life for all lives one death for all deaths salvation's process was completed death penalty paid the price for our eternal life paid divinity could now rest y'all not saying nothing in here however for humanity there is yet unfinished business what are you saying tonight unfinished business he's simply saying finish what he started in the CEB it says when he had received elder Butler the sour wine Jesus said it is completed the YWYC says therefore when Jesus had taken the vinegar elder Butler he said it is ended the message says after he took the wine elder Butler Jesus said it's done it's completed for humanity while there is still yet some sourness of life while there is still bitterness of your soul while there is still envy while there is still injustices while there is still inequities while there is still inequalities while there is still strife while there is still hatred while there is still self-righteousness while there is still pride while there is still wars while there is still rumors of wars while there is still immorality while there is impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy outbursts disputes and deceit factions, envy, and drunkenness, carousing, and any other thing like these. For humanity, there is still unfinished business. Humanity does not want to take nothing. Humanity don't want to endure nothing. Humanity don't want to be held accountable to nothing. Humanity don't want to tolerate nothing. Humanity don't want to be inconvenienced by nothing. Tell your neighbor, tell yourself, shut up and just receive it. Shut up and just take it. Shut up, take the backbiting. Take the reproach. Take the scandal. Take the lies. Shut up and just take it and finish what he started. It. yeah we got to learn how to take some things we got to learn how to endure some things we got to learn how to just be still we got to learn how to be nailed to it hallelujah if you did it be nailed to it if you said it be nailed to it why is it that when what we do we don't want to be remain to it why is it that what we say we don't want to be accountable for saying it if you did it if you said it stay nailed to it Philippians 1 and 6 there go those sixes again being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will finish it will complete it will bring it to an end will carry it done will continue to finally finish will perfect it 2 Corinthians 10 and 6 there's that 6 again having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is completed is fulfilled is finished what are you saying until you avenge your own very disobedience your business is unfinished until you walk in full obedience of God you are not completed until you surrender like Jesus, your business is unfinished.
See, Jesus can say it is finished because through, through his suffering, he learned obedience. 2 Corinthians 10 and 6 in the Amplified says, being ready to punish every act of disobedience when your own obedience as a church is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 and 6 in the Passion Translation. Are we not in Passion Week? It says, since we are armed with such dynamic retreatry, we stand ready to punish every trace of rebellion as soon as you choose to completely obey. Somebody say, I got to make the choice. Somebody say, I got to choose to obey. Tell somebody, I still have unfinished business. I still have rebellion. I still have disobedience. I still have unbelief. I still have doubt. I still have lust. I still have cussing. I still have tripping and dipping and slipping. I still have unfinished business. And why is this, sister? Because the message says this. Why do I have to completely obey? Because 2 Corinthians 10 still in 3 through 6 says the world is unprincipled. It's doggy dog out here. The world doesn't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing. Put your cards away. Put your hot cards away. We ain't out here to market or manipulate nobody but they are for demolishing entire massively corrupt cultures we use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies you know they saying all kind of crazy stuff they ain't speaking the truth it's warped philosophies tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ Christ, y'all ain't got to help me. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction. Build lives of obedience into maturity. That's the finished business. He said it's finished because he obeyed even to the death of the cross. Your finished business is when you're walking in total obedience with God. So what? What humanity started in disobedience from the garden, divinity finished in his obedience on the cross. Say Gethsemane. Now hear, hear the spirit, divinity from the cross of Calvary. Hear what the Holy Ghost was saying through Jesus on the cross of Calvary, the cross of his completion, commanding that what divinity finished, humanity must continue to finish until humanity's unfinished business is finished we must continue tell your neighbor we got to continue what you started I finished Jesus said now what I finished you must finish all of your unfinished business not only divinity has finished what humanity started humanity must finish what divinity started from the cross Hallelujah. For divinity, it is finished. But for humanity, there is still unfinished business. I submit to you tonight, get on your cross. Stay on your cross. Carry your cross. Find out what is unfinished in your life. Find out where there is rebellion and disobedience. Find out where what you have left undone and get to your cross. Stay on your cross because unfinished business, so finish it. What we started. Hallelujah. Is it finished tonight? Hallelujah. <laughs> Luke 23 and 46 reads, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, 
Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. I got 10 minutes to close this thing. I'm going to try my best. Close it, Pastor. In 10 minutes. Like Brother Chris, I can have my time up here. Trying to help myself. For title tonight, I'd like to leave this with you. I have just one thing to say. I commit my spirit. But now it was noon. The whole earth had become dark. And the darkness lasted three hours. Everything is in a total blackout. The temple curtains have split right down the middle. And Jesus has called out with a loud voice to his father. I place my life in your hand. And then he breathed his last breath. What was he thinking before he took the last breath? Imagine if it was you. What would your last words be? before you took your last breath. Would you be calling on your brothers and your sisters? Would you be calling on your sons and your daughters? Would you be calling on your mother or your father? Or would you be calling on Jesus? So many times when we reach a painful situation, we call on everybody else but Jesus. But I submit to you tonight that Jesus gave us the perfect example that when you get in trouble, who to call on? He gave us the perfect blueprint that when you get your back up against the wall, who you can call on. He gave us a way out of escape when things didn't look like it was going to be all right. He said, Father, I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. I can't even begin to think. I'm like, Brother Juan, I can't even begin to think what must have been going through his mind as he got closer to the hour, as he got closer to the time that he knew he was going to have to take his last breath. In the garden, he had a talk with, with the father. And he said, if, if you could have let this pass, But nevertheless, <laughs> not thy will, but, but thy will be done. He, his mind reflected back on the assignment. His mind reflected back on what he was sent to do. His mind reflected back. It's not about me today, but it's about the one that sent me. Can you feel the pressure? that he might have been going through. He came and he did what the father asked him to do. He clothed the naked. He fed the hungry and he visited those that was in prison. He healed the lame man. 
that now came the time where he had to stand with two thieves. Can you feel the pressure? I don't know about you, but I would have given it up a long time ago when they had me in the courtyard and they was whooping me with the cat of nine tails. I would have gave up a long time ago when they were spitting on me. I would have gave up a long time ago when they said crucify. I would have gave up a long time ago. Can you feel the pressure? The pressure that he went through, he did so that you might live. The pressure he went through, he did so that you wouldn't have to go through it. The pressure he went through so that you might not die, but that you might have eternal life. The pressure that he went through so that you would not have to feel the pain that he was going to have to endure. Isaiah 53 and 5 said, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace, of our peace, was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. I, I want to know tonight are you healed tonight? <laughs> I, if you don't know that you're healed tonight, can I, can I let you know you're healed tonight? How do I know that you're healed tonight? Because one day, on an old rugged cross, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, 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 but but he, 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 he died. Oh God. So that you might not have to die. Uh, Christ took the beating. He he took the whipping. He 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 allowed them to spit them. Understand that I said he allowed it. When we were talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, uh, he could have called a legion of angels. Uh, he could have called Gabriel to come on his behalf. Uh, he could have called Michael and got it all done in one swipe. But he hung there. He walked through the city as they mocked him, and as they talked about him, and as they made fun of him. Uh, but he hung there. As he said earlier, these are the same rascals that were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. But he hung there. These were the same ones that was praising him and lifting up holy hands. It was the same ones, Pastor, that was waving their palms as he made the triumphant entry. It was the same ones. Can I give you a, 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 some help tonight? It was going to be the same ones that's going to talk about you. It's going to be the same ones. That's going to stab you in your back. It's going to be the same ones. Gonna smile in your face. But he stayed right there and hung. George Bernard penned these words. And I got excited today as I sat in my apartment and reflected on them. They say, on a hill, far away. Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love the old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners were slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross. Tear my trophies at last, I'll lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross. Hallelujah. Anybody clinging tonight? And exchange someday for a crown. I wish I had somebody that believed that tonight. 
to the old rugged cross I will ever be true to shame and reproach gladly I bear in shame and reproach gladly I remember then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I share and I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm glad that he stayed there and he hung on the old rugged cross. I'm glad he didn't listen to those that, that was crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then the same ones were saying, crucify him. But he hung there and he stayed there. I'm glad that he didn't even get confused on the titles that they were giving him. He knew who he was, so he didn't need them to call him the Messiah. The fact of the matter is, he's the son of the living God. Hallelujah. But he hung there. He had to be there on the cross. And knowing that the time was winding up. And that they was going to nail his hands and his feet, brother Bishop Juan. And he knew that they was going to pierce him in his side. And that he was going to be in excruciating pain. He knew that the time was winding up. I can imagine he was looking around and he was saying, where are you, Peter? You said you was going to be with me to the end. Where are you, Andrew, Thomas, and Paul? Is there anybody here tonight that you had to ask yourself that question? But times got hard. And I'm sure he was really trying to figure it out as he was in pain. But the only thing he could see was that he was hanging on this cross between two old thieves. All he could see, he was looking out in the crowd, a bunch of fake people. All he could see is who was there that didn't really believe that he was the Messiah. And then my mind said, it's good to be grateful and thankful that he hung on the cross. But you, what, what you really ought to be glad for is that there was somebody called Judas. Matthew 26, 14 to 16 reads like this. And one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went into the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they come and they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Who's giving 30 pieces of silver for you tonight? Is there someone giving demise of your being? Is there someone ready to turn you in to your enemies? Is there someone that's ready to give you up and make a mockery out of your testimony? Is there someone that's here tonight that can say that you're living for the Lord and you know that somebody has sold you out for notoriety? They sold you out. Is 
it was amazing that the one that he held closest to him and had sweet counsel with sold him out betrayed him and gave him up but what was even more insulting and embarrassing is how he did it Look at the scripture here in Matthew 26. It says, 48th verse reads like this. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign saying, Whomever I shall kiss, he is the one. Seize him. And immediately he went to Jesus. And said, Hell, Rabbi, and kissed him. We got another translation that reads like this Now he that betrayed him gave them the sign, saying, Whosoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And I began to think, why would he say hold him fast? And then I had to remember he had old crazy Peter there. Even though Peter was nowhere to be found while he was on the cross, the one thing I can say about Peter was, while he was there, you was not going to touch Jesus. While he was there, you weren't going to get in his way. You need to have somebody beside you in this season that's not going to let the devil get in your way. You need to have somebody in your corner that's ready to cut the enemy's ear off so he can't hear your prayers at night. You need to have someone that'll get mad enough and get indignant on your behalf. You need to have someone that'll use a cuss word every now and then to get their point across in the Holy Ghost. You need to have somebody that will stand for right and stand for right. Even when it don't look right, they gonna stand with you. You need a Peter in your life. Hallelujah. Pat Rinky says it like this. We walked in the streets of Jerusalem and shared the same cup of wine. We sailed the seas of Galilee, reaching out to the poor and the blind. Three years of touching others as, our, as we grew stronger each day. Minds toward the day of sacrifice, but he has strayed another way. I knew this time was coming. His embrace would bring me to my end. Swords and torches swirled around me. In the midst stands my trusted friend with his eyes fixed firmly on me with the sorrow I could not miss I said friend do what you must do and he betrayed me with the kiss We all need a Judas in our life. Why would you say that, Elder Ryan? I heard my bishop say, you can't manifest until you've been betrayed with a kiss. You, you can't get to the next level of ministry until you can say somebody didn't betray you. You can't get to the next 
walk of life until the enemy has come and set a booby trap for you. It, it, it's, it, it's always, it's always, it always disturbs me how those that are the closest to you can cause you so much pain. It's always those uh, that, that, that you depend on uh, that keeps on making you cry at night. It, it's always those uh, that you thought that had your back that will have you on bending knees. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, is, is there anybody in here that's trying to be kissed tonight? Are you really trying to be kissed tonight? Because once you've been kissed, you got to know the pain is coming. Uh, well, once you get kissed, you got to know that you're going to feel uncomfortable. Once you get kissed, you got to know that you're going to feel some pressure. Uh, what I want to remind you is that when, when the kids come, or when you see the person coming that's doing the kissing, just be like Jesus was and say, do what you got to do. Hallelujah. Let me wrap this up right here. So Jesus said in the New Testament that the soldiers beat him and before leading him to, the cru to be crucified, that the accusations against him would have been written and tied around his neck while he carried the cross to be crucified. What have they put around your neck as they crucified you? This would let everyone know the crime for which he was being executed for. The accusations was then to be nailed above the cross. And here it was, it said Jesus. Uh, crime was to be published in three different languages. And it read, the, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. What would it say on your plaque tonight? Will it say that you are a follower of the king? Or will they say you never knew him? Will it say that you was a soldier of the cross? Or will they say dishonorable discharge? Will they say that you was one that kept the faith? Or will it say uh, he fell out and, and broke up and, and ran away? Will it say uh, that you was the one uh, that stood there at the very hour and you came and you stayed there and suffered with him? Uh, are you willing to suffer with him tonight? Uh, are you willing to suffer with the king of kings? Uh, are you willing to suffer with the lord of lords? Uh, are you willing to go through the pain? Uh, are you willing to hang on the cross? Uh, are you willing to go through uh, all the way to the end? Uh, I'm so glad uh, that I can know that as I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I won't fear no evil for thou art with me uh, thy rod uh, and thy staff uh, comforts me. Uh, he prepares uh, a table before me uh, in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. 
surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and this is what I get excited about I will dwell in the house of the Lord that's all I'm trying to tell you tonight because he died for you and for me I have the opportunity to dwell with him in the house of the Lord if you excited about it tonight come on and lift your hands come on and make some noise come on and let the Lord know I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands I wish I had somebody that was excited tonight that he died on a Golgotha he was on the old rugged cross but he didn't say there he had went down and was buried in a borrowed tomb. They tell me that he went down to hell and he took the keys of death and the sting and he, he opened up the gates and he loosed them. Hallelujah. But he didn't stay right there. He went on up to glory. Hallelujah. And he sits on the right hand of God the Father making intercession for you and me. That's what I'm glad about. Hallelujah. That's something to be glad about. Hallelujah. The time has come for you to call on the Father. The time has come for you to take his hand. The time has come for you to commit to God. That's all I'm trying to tell somebody. I opened up earlier and said that I have one thing to say and that's to let somebody know I'm committed until the end. If you are going through something don't give up but stay committed to the end. I'm glad that he didn't give up. I'm glad he finished it. I'm glad his blood has made me brand new. I'm glad that even if I cry at night, he still will come to my rescue. He took his last breath. He took his last breath. He took his last breath. And he said, I commend my spirit unto you. And he took up the ghost. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that we got the victory. I'm so glad that he committed his spirit because now it's over. I'm so glad he committed his spirit because the time has expired. I'm so glad that I committed my spirit because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I die daily to sin to my flesh, to my attitude, to pride, to this education, and I need to depend on him. I'm committed to his word. I'm committed to his spirit. I'm committed. Hallelujah. And thou, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Hallelujah. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me to come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come, I come. That's all you got to do tonight. No matter what you're going through, what you've been through or how you are, just come to him. The old folks used to sing the song that said, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus while you have time. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Make up your mind. He will make your life brand new. 
He will take care of you. Come to Jesus while you have time. I'm committed tonight because it's done. I'm committed tonight because his blood has made me whole. That word commitment, Pastor, means dedicated, means loyalty, means wholeheartedly. I'm committed tonight. And I got one thing to say I commit my spirit. Put your hands together. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. I don't even know how you can sit there, amen. After hearing what the Lord has done for you, you want to get up on your feet and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't the nails that kept him on the cross. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, amen, all the things that, we, that we've we heard and that we know about what happened to him on Calvary's cross. It wasn't none of that that kept him on the cross. But it was the love. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved the world. The ones who won't stand up for him. He so loved the world. The one who turned their back on him. He so loved the world. Who's so pious, amen? If the president walked up in here, you'll be on your feet. If your boo is somebody you know on TV, your celebrity walked up in here, you'll be looking for an autograph. But the Bible says he so left the world. But he gave his only begotten son. It wasn't the nails, it was his love for the Father. It was his love to do the Father's will. Glory to God. And he gave his life. Are you really thirsty? That thirsty? The answer is yes, I'm really that thirsty. He was the living water. He was the living water. He wasn't thirsty for no water. He was thirsty for the Father. Father had turned his back because he can't look upon sin. It was the sin of the world that dehydrated him. It was your sin and my sin. The unfinished business. Come on, holy God. glory to God. It dehydrated him. But he hung there. Glory to God. It was killing him. But he hung there. He did that for us. We're able to celebrate Good Friday because of what he did on Calvary's cross. We're able to celebrate Good Friday and Easter coming up, amen. Talking about Easter eggs and Easter burning because of what he did on Calvary's cross. <laughs> Pastor Wine, Bishop Wine, you said it. I don't even know how we can sit still when we just look at the cross and think about what he did for us. He didn't have to do that. He did it because he loved the Father. And the Father gave him a command that he was going to do whatever he had to do to do what the Father asked him to do. He's been laying his life down. Hung, bled, and died for me. We still got unfinished business. Still thirsting after the wrong things. Come on, Holy Ghost. Still don't want to forgive. He's, the first thing he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He wasn't just talking about them in the crowd, them that spit on him, smacked him around. He talked about us. Glory to God. He 
new amen that the day was going to come that we still, glory to God, with our sanctified self, still got some uh, real, still got some flesh, still got some old ideas. So, come on, Holy Ghost. He did it for us. We gathered here because of us. He allowed us to gather because of what he did on Calvary. Don't, be, don't, let, don't, don't, don't take this. This is one of the most extraordinary days in history. It's the pivotal moment in the Christian church in the kingdom of God. How, how dare us take this as though it's just we're just gonna go and hear the last saying of Christ. No, we, we, we hear, he said, remember me. One thief told the other thief, he said, wait a minute, man, we, 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 we got what's coming to us, what we are, he ain't did nothing. It ought to cause us to weep. It ought to cause us to cry. It ought to cause us to fall on our face, amen, before the living God. Father, forgive me. How I treat you so trivial. How I disrespect you in my ways. How I do, don't do what you told me to do. How I lie and cheat and continue to do all the things that you say we shouldn't do. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Are you that thirsty? The answer ought to be yes. He was thirsting for his relationship with God. He was thirsting for God. He wanted the Father. Mother, son, behold thy mother. Mother, woman, behold thy son. He was saying, go ahead and do the unfinished business that I told you to do. Go ahead and continue doing what I told you to do, what I showed you. He was a living example. He's teaching us even right now. Even right now, 2022, he's still teaching us. God, we still got some old. Come on, Holy Ghost. He's still teaching us. Are we listening? He learned obedience, as the elders said, by the things that he said. My friends, that's the example he's given us tonight. The word has been preached. Ethically, the guys have shared the heart of God tonight. As Elder Ron said, there's only one last thing to do. If you go back to Palm Sunday, the resurrection Sunday, eight days, there was one thing on Jesus' mind. Souls for Jesus. He was saving souls on the cross. He went through all he went through because he was saving souls. He knew that there's some folk, amen, still were going to believe. There's some folks still struggling, amen. Is he really God or should we look for another? was when it's sold. And tonight, those that are watching, those that are here, this is your night to receive Jesus Christ. You want to know what all the hype is about? Because he died. He gave up the ghost. But the Bible says in three days, come on Holy Ghost, he arose again and I got news for your world. He is alive. He is alive. He is risen. He's not dead. The stone has been rolled away. The Lord God is alive. You can receive him tonight. He'll come right into your living room. As a matter of fact, I, 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 I dare to tell you, he's right there with you now. It's him that's been carrying you through. It's him that's been speaking to you. But 
that soft, quiet spirit voice. Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, if you would confess with your mouth Christ Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You can be saved. Just receive him. Father, I repent. Father, I repent. And I turn from my evil ways. And I acknowledge, Lord God, that you are God and that you are the Son of the living God. I acknowledge tonight that every word that has been spoken by the prophets, by the men of God, by the bishop, by the pastors, and by the elders, every word that you've spoken tonight, Lord God, I receive it in Jesus' name. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Change me, glory to God. Are you really that thirsty? Are you thirsting for him? Father, we love you. Thank you for quenching our thirst tonight. Through your word. You are our living water. And we'll never thirst again. Everybody stand. Those that are able to stand, stand with us as we close. I pray your heart and your spirit, soul and mind have been blessed tonight by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that you know that Jesus is change agent he'll change your life tonight won't you trust him won't you consult with him won't you rely on him won't you yield to him as a matter of fact why don't you just go ahead and cry Go ahead and cry. Just go ahead and cry. Consult, rely, and yield. Cry unto the Lord. We love you and we thank God for you. May the peace of God rest, rule, and abide in every house, every home, every heart. May your life never be the same because of the power of the Holy Ghost. May the God of peace. I want to talk about that. You want to give me a chance to give unto the Lord. After you've heard these blessed men and women of God preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want you to be able to sow unto the Lord. Show him how thirsty you are. That you'll sow unto him what he's done on Calvary's cross what he's done that we might enjoy moments like this in his presence the altar is open we want you to come you pay your tithes your offerings you can just bless the Lord with the seed however the Lord is using you and calling you to do just come and be a blessing to the house of God and as you come we want to give you the benediction we're asking that God will bless you those who give, those who had it to give but could not give, we ask for God to bless you tonight. The Bible says it's better to give than to receive. Give unto the Lord tonight. He prayed, he paid the ultimate price for us. We can give a dollar for him. Come on, Holy Ghost. Now may the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant may he make you perfect unto every good work to do his will 
working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight to whom be honor, glory and majesty now henceforth and forevermore the people of God said amen amen and give God a great shout of hallelujah Bring your 